Um, so welcome to the Art of Freedom. Um, this is the four last meeting. So we have one more to go after this one. And uh, today there's the Ancestry Family Healing Target. And uh, that's kind of um, my speciality. Ancestry, Family, Freedom, Art of Freedom. So today we're just going to sit with that idea and not to make any of it real no actually looking for uh, the uh, way out of uh, being bound by it or misidentified by it so now to start this to to bring this in an like acceptable way is then in fact to to look at um, what is happening in your transformation? What is happening? We look at that many times, and it's not, it's not really about keep observing it or something. It is just to get a clear uh, vision about what is going on, and to to yeah make that really simple. In fact, you could say like um you're shifting back and forth. Like you have your moments of meditation of uh, say coming into a still place inside yourself, uh, relaxing into your stillness, as we call it, or um, experiencing light or experiencing love, uh, which is the same, um, experiencing something of a nature that you recognize as yourself. And um, that is something that confirms you as you truly are. So that you know this. It's like I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but it's like this is always confirming you as you know yourself. Deeply inside of you, you feel safe by it. You feel comforted by it. Even though it might not have a reason, it might just be a spontaneous occurrence, but you're experiencing something that is comforting you. And without your description, or without your analysis, or without any of those activities that you normally perform when something is happening in in your human existence. So it's like in your human existence, you, you're you really never comfortable. Not really. You're always looking for more comfort. Oh, I have to put my chair somewhere else. Oh, I have to... Too hot, it's too cold, it's too wet, it's too dry, it's too... There's too much rain, there's not enough rain, there's this, there's that. Like there's a continuing changing discomfort. Uh, you focus on this for a moment, you focus on that. But how... <coughs> it doesn't do anything else than keeping you busy, in fact. And, um, yeah, it's interesting for me to see how people do that if I see people and for instance my neighbor or anyone like not specifically my next door neighbor but specifically human beings looking at them they continuously have to talk they continuously have to ask questions or act yeah actively putting themselves into a different situation in which they hope to find some comfort and safety and you recognize this, but if you don't go do it as a little exercise, you will see that people are continuously busy getting comfortable and they can't really find it at the same time. So um, you in your, in your new discoveries of yourself um, look for the stillness and the peace and the happiness um, that you know where to find now, like that's happening within you, it, it doesn't need anything outside. But then here comes along your family, your maybe friends, maybe mm, grandparents, maybe grandchildren, maybe children, maybe who knows what, um, that recognize you as the one with the name the one with the history, the one with the ancestry, the one with the yeah, genetic uh, memory. Um, 
the one that we know performs in a certain way, that acts and responds in a certain way, that is present in a certain way, like according to a, a description of you. And uh, you play along in the in the play that you play in the in the existence of you. Uh, you call it relationships, uh, family relationships, or <coughs> friends relationships, or work relationships. All these, it's all the same in that sense. So it's a. In fact, if you really take a look at it, it is a description of you as you're not completely but partially that seems to be you in a way that you learned to deal with or not at all uh, but at least you made an attempt to deal with it and to let yourself be called that name and that identity you conform conform to it to in, in a certain measure which is like a sacrifice, in fact, if you look at that again. So what am I saying here? Well, I said like we're moving back and forth from this still place inside yourself where you recognize everything that is given is absolutely confirming your, uh, say, light reference identity as you are, and not by your definition, but coming from within and recognizing that in your consciousness, like, yes, here is it where I feel at home in myself. And then shifting back to coming out of that experience, the next moment you find yourself in a uh, relationship network where, say, so called people are expecting something from you or you have to behave a certain way because that was literally how you formulated the world. Now, this, this you recognize, I, I explained that clearly enough. So today, looking at this ancestry, looking at um, family relationships, like how on earth can you be free in not letting yourself be limited in any way? How can you stay free in your relationships? How can you um, stay free inside yourself in this setup. How do you do that? Is there a way to do that? Uh, so this, this is in fact where we're diving in today. And to me, that's very interesting. I'm really happy that I can take a look at this with you. And um, so for that, I, yeah, I just got inspired by different things. So one of them is um, a video about your genetic memory, epigenetics it's called, like the genetics that have to do with um, yeah, e evolution, um, but also intervening in that DNA in order to ha maybe have a better life as a human being would try, of course, yeah, you cannot uh, skip one method to get a better life. Or maybe you can extend your longevity. Um, you might be fine, or, yeah, discovering a formula in which your life becomes eternal. Uh, would be great, right? <sighs> so this is what science does. And we're going to watch, uh, say, a YouTube movie about that for just a moment. And so that's one part. And then there's another part. Let's see if I can remember that. Um, so I'm in a quick forgetting mode. I, I don't hold on to anything. And that means that something that I did like 10 minutes ago or half an hour ago can be completely gone as if it has been lifetimes since I, since I thought about it. So that's a surprise video then. I'm, I'm, I have no idea. Uh, but it's also very much to the point. Mm. Oh, yeah, the, here's the one. Yeah, this is about this 800,000 year character uh, that they found in the ground and they tested the age and it's 800,000 years old. So it's like how far 
uh, back are we going with our genetic memory? It's like, is there a limit to it? Is there really such thing as a time suddenly? Or how to take a look at that? How do we do this? So that's another interesting point. So then there's um, there's more. So in in the which is also very interesting. Like in the I'm giving you all the spoilers already, but in the development of you coming into your idea of freedom, like coming into the a transformative place inside yourself, you see that. Um, if you had a Christian upbringing, for instance, that there were certain um, biblical references that were hard to digest, that you think like, what does this mean? Or what is asked of me? Like, I'm willing to do anything, but what is asked of me? What's actually, uh, the, you could say, like, what is actually necessary for my transformation? How do I need to sacrifice my family in order to come to an elevated state or what how does that work actually so I there's some I think I, I got four biblical references that all have to do with that and so these were taught by the uh, religious establishment and actually very intensely used and um, in fact in in an uh, guilt idea like if you don't do this then you're actually not doing it some kind of thing uh, we come to that later but uh, that's also very interesting so that's uh, has really to do with the healing target thing like you you have heard that if you have a Christian background you have heard about that and since we're <laughs> listening to Joel, doing A Course in Miracles, or reading Teilhard de Chardin, or who knows who. Like you, you probably have a resonance with the Christian um, yeah, uh, history, like or at least the Bible. So all that today, and then there's um, Master Teacher. So I, I use Master Teacher, it's like always a bit like um, an, you could say like an supra consciousness like as an as an illumined consciousness and actually I want to start with that right now uh, I use his mind in that sense I use his mind because it's so bright that if I share an idea with it it directly and gives you a reference point that you might not recognize right away, but it starts certainly starts to come in into your consciousness, and you recognize it because it is it is recognizable, even though you might not comprehend or you might not understand any of it. It really does not matter. The recognition is probably there. I I'm assuring you of that. So this is where I want to start with. But I'm taking a look first at the chat. Not that I always use it, but oh yeah, okay. So that's great. We got some <laughs> familiarity here, very familiar, and very family familiar. Nice. So let's let's do this then. So all in all, we also have an uh, say a whiteboard session. That's going to be interesting too. I'm not waiting too long with that. So. Just hope you sit on the edge of your seat to, to continue to, to listen carefully and be completely present in what the next step will be. Family ancestry, the art of freedom. Well, there's not so much. What is the impact of your ancestry on your transformation? Yeah. How long is it all determined? Like by what is it determined? Where you identify with? Is there a quantum leap alternative? available so these are just some things that you will hear about today now here's our master teacher to start with that just to give us a reference point and we're talking here about a new framework of supra consciousness it's like an elevated consciousness a new framework of a supra consciousness new light energy you are being directed to utilizing this new discovered, you newly discovered, oops, sorry, 
newly discovered light to stimulate and to ignite genetic response and that is possible within the framework of your symbiotic relationship of body response. We call this the miracle. So here Master Teacher says this, it's like you are being directed, use, utilizing this new light energy, it's like this energy, when you meditate, this energy, this um, light comes into your cellular system, into your genetic um, system and it will have a certain response like and it's a, it's really possible within the framework of your symbiotic relationship of body response so it's in other words so in other words like the light that you experience in in your meditation in your moment of oh yes thank you god um, that does something with your whole physical system. There's nothing new either. You you recognize that that happen that happens to you, whether you're aware of that or not. Some old memories might be stirred up or might just be shaken for just a moment. You might feel confused. You might feel lonely. You f might feel even depressed or whatever it is for just a short moment because you literally have a physical response to the light that comes into your system. And that's all perfectly all right. So it's like that's where this light is actually doing its work. That's where things are changing. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it's like there is an, say, quantum alternative to an evolutionary process. In other words, if I would, if I would wait, we talked about this the other day too, it's like, if I would wait for my il illumination to naturally occur in an evolutionary process, it might take two million years. Luckily, here's the speed up then with uh, the possibility of, um, say, utilizing the miracle to collapse time, to literally being lifted out of space and time and coming back in, going out, coming back in, going out, coming back in, receiving more light, coming back out, coming back in. You know, it becomes like an, a contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion experience of yourself. You can even feel this sometimes too as as if you're on a roller coaster ride in your transformational path. One day you do your lesson or you do your meditation, you feel great, like high in the sky, absolutely fantastic. And the next day it is, you hit a wall. So this is the natural, you could say, the natural process of miraculous healing. This is how that can go. It doesn't necessarily have to go like this, but it's very common. So this is also important to, to see that that's occurring in you and also to actually use it and not let your day be, um, say, uh, depressed by it or something. It's like. No, this is just a normal thing that occurs, so not, no worries about it. In this new light energy, then we're talking about cellular response. In this new light energy, you have discovered you can't die, right? Like what would die about you if you're not a body, for instance, but coming into a whole different experience of yourself as being the light of the world instead of a body on earth that can die. So, and that has an immense effect on your cellular system. The cellular response is always to eternity, to, you could say, like total longevity, a cellular response to enlightenment. Well, hold on. <laughs> Supraconsciousness, if you will stop configuring the thought forms in your limited genetic identity, just like thinking that you're this form in human relationships, walking your path here uh, from birth to death. If you stop configurating yourself like that, the thought forms in your limited identity, 
you expand automatically and immediately, instantaneously, to a new framework of supra-consciousness. Gnostic man, transcend to the light. Gnostic man. So I'll expand on that a little bit. So I'm using this as a reference, and you know why. Because in your, in your meditation, this is what occurs, or starts to occur. You open up more and more and more. There's light coming in, into your system, even in your physical system, even though that's not you, but still, it's still working that. And um, now you start to train yourself in not defining yourself as, as a limited um, entity in space and time, undergoing all kinds of experiences to eventually die. Like this whole th theme, this whole story doesn't fly anymore for you. You cannot believe that any longer. You cannot live by that any longer. Now, and here Master Teacher says that has an incredible influence. <laughs> I'm talking Dutch. Incredible influence on your physical system if you dislodge from your life story as you knew it, from your existence story, has an incredible impact. So every cell starts to relax, in fact, starts to breathe and to accept and to open and become even more receptive for all this. See, I'm just giving you a conceptual story about this while actually you can feel the, the light that is in it. You can feel, like when I speak about this, I'm actually feeling that in my body while I speak. And I have a lot of recognition with that because of the experiences that I have had and have. <laughs> so there's so much joy connected to the release of the human identity, the release of being bound by it, the release of having to determine the outcome that is inevitable, like death, having, having, uh, being able to let go of that whole idea, and opening up to a new experience of yourself that has nothing to do with my description of it, but has everything to do with my true, you could say, authenticity. Like, this, was the, this is the way that I am created, whole and perfect in perfect communication with the whole universe. And my mind is, is, is like in a constant state of supra-consciousness, of, of an enlightened uh, nature. I'm drifting back and forth from the fourth to the tenth dimension, uh, going, you know, that is like, yeah, shift back and forth through that, but not letting myself be determined anymore by a three-dimensional, a limitation of myself. This is the description Master Teacher gives. So, and, and that's very exciting to hear that. And this is our reference point here in this meeting. It's like, this is our reference point. This is where we start. So everything, every step away from this is also very recognizable. And it's also something that can happen during your day. And that's why I mention it too. But first, I want you to know uh, certainly and surely that this is our reference point. This is our way out of the limitations that we take a look at for just a moment. We do that for a very specific reason. Like I said, it's a healing target. So that means uh, it, everything is being used for the undoing of what is not. And there's nothing to be afraid of that, because everything is given you. You cannot miss out on anything. It is just different. That is all. That's so great. I love it. Thank you so much for being here and enjoying this with me. It's, it's really pretty wild. It's really wild. So this is just the beginning then. So we had Master Teacher visiting us. So I'm continuing. Yeah, we had this one. So now we go to our 800-year-old guy and watch it. So I'm going to... 
archaeologists digging in the Atapuerca Mountains in northern Spain discovered the fossilized remains of an archaic group of humans unlike any other ever seen. The bones were cut and fractured and appeared to have been cannibalized. The largest skeletal fragments which came from at least six individuals and dated to at least 800,000 years ago shared some similarities with modern humans, Homo sapiens, plus other now extinct human relatives like Neanderthals and Denisovans but were just different enough to defy classification as any known species. Researchers ultimately named the previously unknown hominins Homo antecessor, borrowing the Latin word for predecessor, because the bones were among the oldest Homo fossils ever found in Europe. Some researchers speculated that Homo antecessor may have been the elusive common ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans. Now a new study of its DNA, the single oldest sample of human genetic material ever analyzed, argues that that's probably not the case. In the study published April 1st in the journal Nature, researchers sequenced the ancient proteins in the enamel of an 800,000-year-old Homo antecessor tooth, using the proteins to decipher the portion of genetic code that created them. After comparing that code with genetic data from more recent human tooth samples, the team com concluded that Homo antecessors DNA was too different to fit on the same branch of the evolutionary tree as humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans. Thank you so much. I, I stop this because it just continues on more scientific talk and you can definitely take a look at it but I thought it was sufficient for to make our point here. Um, that's why I had to show it to you. It's so like, okay, so we're actually looking at an 800,000 year old DNA, like you might still carry it around, who knows, because there might be a part still in there in your DNA. So this, this is the way that science looks at it. And so is the next video um, that has everything to do with the epigenetics and it will be explained what that means so i'll go for that now right away too scientists are discovering that human dna alterations can and do happen in fact they found out that a person's lifestyle has a significant impact on our DNA. So, uh, what we do as humans, the choices we do, the way we treat our cells and our body, changes the way our genes are wired. Over the course of 15 years, Dr. Andrea Baccarelli has been studying epigenetics and the effects that lifestyle choices and the environment have on our DNA. The mechanism we study is called methylation, is the addition of a small chemical group onto the DNA that do not change the DNA sequence, but do change whether a gene is on and off. That's particularly important for the creation of our bodies. Dr. Baccarelli's work shows that DNA alterations occur based on the lifestyle choices we make. The epigenome changes all the time. And therefore, it, it, it allows for our bodies to be resilient to adapt to, uh, to the challenges of every day, and this is why we can read what the lifestyles do on our, on our DNA. So whether we smoke, whether we exercise, whether we do um, things that uh, can change our, uh, our bodies. We can use this as an internal built-in biosensor to record everything we do. Under epigenetics, one of the lifestyle factors that alters DNA structure is diet. The food we eat can trigger chemical reactions in the body that cause DNA alterations. It shows how our food choices influence the expression of our genes and consequently our health and well-being. At the same time, physical exercise leads to epigenetic modifications that can help improve our health. And these modifications can reduce mutations of cancer cells. However, bad lifestyle habits, like smoking, can have negative effects on our DNA. A study shows that exposure to cigarette smoke can also trigger epigenetic changes that can lead to lung cancer. As such, Dr. Baccarelli's discoveries help us understand the link between lifestyle and disease, and further encourage us to live a healthy lifestyle. What's interesting is that these, uh, these uh, programs in the DNA can be reverted. 
So if you change your lifestyle one year, two years from now, you will be able to see that, you, that what was wrong in your DNA is going back to normal. So I think it would be an amazing motivation for each of us to work on ourselves and to work, uh, to work on our health. Clearly, epigenetics highlight the importance of our lifestyle choices and remind us to live healthy in the years to come. Great. Great. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Um, you see that <laughs> if you have a good lifestyle, so to speak, you could return back to normal human behavior, normal human... humanness. <laughs> okay, so... If that works for humans, imagine what happens when you return back to uh, the light within. Like, apparently, that can influence your DNA too, and it certainly does. So, so how do you recognize that? That's a really interesting question, actually. We, I didn't even think about sharing it, but it has a lot of influence on your, even on your glandular system or your bodily system. Um, so I can go into that a little bit. Um, you see, I, I speak from my own experience in this. It's like coming, having regular, like light experiences or deep meditation or such incredible quiet that it literally can feel it all through, um, changes your glandular system because your yeah DNA your whole physical system changes your whole configuration changes your whole energy configuration changes so in the glandular change I um, have to recognize that in myself as um, like not that I get breasts but they are a bit bigger than normal so to speak <laughs> for a man so that's one thing that you can imagine. But so there is more that, that can change. And you can look look it up what can all change by doing a lot of meditation or staying in that. For sure you you possibly start to look younger for no reason whatsoever. Or you don't seem to get old or you you know, all these things. Because you're not identifying yourself anymore as this time bound organism um, with a history so like like I said in the beginning too it's like your cell you have a cellular response to the actual occurrences that are happening when you are in your transformation so how lovely is that you don't need to do anything for that it's literally changing yourself changing your whole system until it becomes so complete and whole that it um, say yeah, what happens then? It completely expands into light. It becomes transcendent. You start to resurrect, you start to ascend. And this this is not something that might happen to you in five lifetimes. This is a real, I say, possibility in your life as you know it right now. Like, in that it can happen because of your determination and your uh, say openness to the the fact that that's a possibility that's literally why i share this with you too it's like the power of your mind is incredible if i think i cannot do it i cannot do it if i think it's a possibility suddenly there's an openness now with the um say with the say subjects we share here this is a continuation of the expansions like it goes deeper and deeper and you can go higher and higher in your consciousness and uh, up to a point that um, yeah you you don't know where this stops you know it's like it is it is heading towards an, an illumination of mind but what is that what what is how would that feel how would it feel to be completely free of any limitation that you impose upon yourself it's like this. So now coming back to our family, because that was the subject, family and ancestry, you see that science looks at it uh, in an, like hundred thousands of years perspective. 
and the epigenetics looks on it and like how can we return everything back to a normal human being because we're going to stay who we are like that is not real challenging that's not really like opening something up for us but recognizing that that is the only thing that is occurring here in in this human plane you would say it becomes very obvious that literally here you will not find a solution for that like i said it, evolutionary talking here it might take it two million years for for a human being to become enlightened just as a natural process <laughs> so it it is all almost like um as if i'm selling miracles here like this is all um, to emphasize the necessity for the miracle because it's in fact the only alternative you have practicing that coming into the habit of doing that say learning a new habit of um, giving a miracle to someone extending yourself in the light and love that you are to someone and in fact say recognizing his or her light in yourself you recognize it in someone else too that becomes a shared experience it it is a possibility to share see with the things of the human race so to speak there's so much that cannot be shared like that literally is taken or that is uh, ended or that is like this but coming back to your celestial um, ancestry your celestial home <laughs> that is the one thing that communicates it's the only thing that communicates that what is open and can be shared that what is real like love can be shared it's real it's because that's what you are and you can extend it to everyone and everyone will recognize it because we're all that um, okay so epigenetics we got this 800,000 years so <clears throat> Here I put the question, can we not influence our DNA? No, we're constantly influencing our DNA. And it's up to us with what? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it is impossible to not influence your DNA. You do it the whole day. So then we have third part, the universe. This is another expression from a master teacher. The history of the universe is contained in you. There is no thought of uh, variation in the construct of consciousness that is not contained in you. And that's a very interesting expression, I thought. I had to put it here. So you could call this like a time travel because, um, see, if there's a history of the universe, it is contained in me. But there's no such thing as time and at the same time. There's no thought of variation in the construct of consciousness that is not contained in you. How could there be, you would say, like how could there be something that is not contained in me since I am whole and perfect and say all inclusive, omnipresent, um, omniscient, um, omnipotent, like how could something be missing in my um, say configuration right so that's an interesting one so the time travel idea that i want to connect to this is then since we're looking at miracles which is you're being lifted out of time into eternity in fact for just a moment like the miracle has actually nothing to do with time it's not ruled by it it plays out in time it appears that way but actually you're taken out of time for just a moment and come back in but in a different you enter in into a different time this is what you have to understand of miracles it's like it's a real catalyst it's it's a sudden change in which you are lifted out of it you experience light you extend it to your brother you thank god for it um, all in the same movement or thought or breath and the next moment you find yourself in a different place in time this is what i call time travel you just collapse two thousand years by just listening to this it's like 
you from this million years of evolutionary process to your enlightenment you just like you just snapped out two uh, two thousand years and this is really how this works with the miracle you make progress in a way that is not reasonable to a human mind but it's still possible and this is what i have no yeah uh, say been seeing or experiencing on a continuing basis i you have no idea what happens actually what how fast that goes and um, how perfect that is so closer and closer and closer you come to the end of time so if the whole universe is say literally uh, in you it is in you now and you could also say like Everything that is happening in this universe is happening in you, in this moment. So that gives you a whole different idea about yourself. So you could also say, like, there's nothing that you don't know about what is going on right now. You know all about it. You recognize it when you're open to recognize it and recognizing it as a possibility. It can come to you what it means and what it will tell you. So this is quite a mind stretch, I, I know, but it's so great to to see what you actually can do with your like whole mind. Because that's what we're talking about here. It's like it's the whole mind. It's a mind that contains the whole universe. Every construct, every thought is in fact contained in that consciousness. And that is you, not anyone else. So that's really really amazing that's an understatement uh, okay so let's take a look at the basics of ancestry it's like what do we actually need for to have an ancestry how what do we need to have a past uh, with a genetic past like we saw the 800,000 year old something so we need time for that right otherwise it doesn't make sense Ancestry needs time. It needs a an, an frame of reference that is rooted in time so we can say like that was my grand-grand-grandmother. She married my grand-grand-grandfather and out of them came, you know, all this stuff. And up to today my, <coughs> my characteristics of me as this human being living in time are still looking very much the same as my grand grandfather because he had a tendency to um, could wiggle his ears uh, while he was eating he could wiggle his ears and i can do that too you know kind of stuff like this um. <laughs> all right so, of course, you need a body, otherwise you can't wiggle with your ears. You can't do the same thing as your grandfather and grand-grand-grandfather did. Or who knows what, but at least you need a body, otherwise you don't have a genetic code either. So that's one of the necessities too. So then I put down the word imagination. And that's an interesting term that we hardly, hardly ever use. Uh, except for only in your imagination can this happen uh, and that's exactly how I want to use it like this is an offspring so to speak of your imagination while you might have thought of it as um, actually you might have thought of it as an actual physical presence of you and and that's also very humanly normal to think like that but it has a lot of consequences that that we actually seeing that we um, say use as an opposite or as a different kind of reference point as where we started our meeting with so what I'm saying with that is the space-time continuum the, the family idea the ancestry idea the thing that is uh, the dream you could say like that's why I call it the imagination it's a dream it is a formulation um, that you made up to identify yourself as separate from everything that is
because if I would tell you like you're all the universe, you know exactly everything that is occurring in this universe, you say like, well, no, that's not me. I, I cannot do that. And, and I say, yes, you can, you can do that, but you don't know yet. You're going to find out. And, and that's the great thing too, from waking up or seeing that your mind can become whole and see that it has capacities that you had no idea about. So you could say like psychic abilities. Yeah, so you might be familiar with that. So then there's uh, this part, so we cover that. Mm. Oh yeah, so I use this, like I said in the beginning too. I use all of this to make sure that you know what is going on in time and space for you as an, as an identification uh, is in fact there's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me wrong. It's like eternity can wait. It is timeless. So it, there's no there's no pressure to change anything. But you can allow these changes to occur because of your um, new consciousness. Seeing that you can see things in a new light and you become very much attracted to that, to let it become your total experience of yourself. So that is different. And you might be coming like fed up with the limitations of your human definition of the organizing your life, um, seeing the pain that is related to it, seeing the losing the ones you love, seeing that death is taking people away, it looks like this. And sickness and uh, limitation and death is, is occurring in that space and time because it is related to the human frame of reference, the imaginary dream of human existence. That is the one that you live in if you're not in your full light realization. So here's, the, here's our um, healing point so to speak so I'm, I'm continuing it's like after we have <coughs> excuse me we have an, a whiteboard session coming up because uh, it might be a good moment to take a look at so what what am I actually identifying with still in space and time that is very tempting for me to fall into that I'm asking always almost <laughs> always the same questions but that's that's the only thing I can ask in fact so where do I easily fall back into in my um, say relationship ancestry um, idea about myself what is tempting me to stay in time so to speak I hope you can see it well I will put on my headphone set if you if you want to share something via the chat, you're welcome to do so. I'll put it right in. So what family roles are still tempting to you as a temporal identification? Okay, well... Okay, that's that's great. So yeah, we recognize all these like mother, daughter, grandmother, wife, love, and all the responsibilities and obligations that come with those roles. Children, big brother, oldest child, wife, uncle, giver of skills to handle life, biological mother, grandmother. Um, uncle, son, lover, granddad, father, brother, partner, friend, mother, daughter, sister, grandmother, sister, sister, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, thank you for your input. That's really great. Um, so, see, it's it's obvious what you do in time. It's like it's obvious what you do in time and 
Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, like I said. It's not that you have to work it or forget about it or something like that. But we will come back to it after our little musical break. Yeah, here they are. So, <clears throat> I just found th four um, references and you see 2 Corinthians 9, 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Like what you sow, you will reap. Like if you give everything to it, you will receive everything from it. And if you give a little bit, then you receive a little bit. So that's like a, a law, you could say, that is being used. So I'm using this in terms of the ancestry, in terms of um, like um, taking another look at uh, what the Bible says in relationship with um, forgiveness, in fact. In Deuteronomy 32, which is the Old Testament, 35, vengeance is mine and recompense. Their foot sh uh, shall slip in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things to come hasten upon them. Vengeance is mine and recompense, recompense. Their foot shall slip in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things to come hasten upon them. So these are four references, uh, this, these were the first two, but these are four references that you will see in a moment uh, being brought in a different light to alleviate, in fact, because this is being used in churches a lot to, to do something with it that is actually not helpful. Or you could say, like, in your development as an ego mind, you could use these things very well to attack each other. Romans 12, verse 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So this is also interesting. So then we have Exodus 34, 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving inequity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the inequity of the fathers, upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Now, well, that, hey, I don't know if you recognize this reference, but I can tell you from my experience that it has been sounding like, almost like the tower clocks of uh, the curl, the dom from Cologne, like the, the dom from Cologne has really deep, dark bells. It sounds like that to me. It's like they make a lot of noise, very deep, dark noises. And the whole church is dark. But anyways, it's like it has something really not friendly, very disturbing, in fact. But these words have sounded in my mind like that when I heard them as a child or later on I heard this. It's like, whoa. That stuff I really don't like to read. That's like, oh, that's a big threat. And I probably was threatened with it too by someone who thought that was a real threat of God or something. Forgetting that God is all loving and creating in his likeness. I want to use this first. Holy Spirit. If you let the Holy Spirit reinterpret the expressions we just read in its own light, they will suffice. Like you really have to ask for what they actually mean in order to make sense of them, or in order to let them speak to you in a way that's constructive in terms of your transformation. What you believe to be worth cultivating, you will cultivate in yourself. This is what the first expression was. 
your judgment of what is worthy does make it worthy for you. What you think has value, you value. That's why it's becoming worthy to you. So here's one aspect that cannot be shared. Vengeance, vengeance cannot be shared. So it's like a whole different idea than, for instance, love. Love can be shared, but vengeance cannot be shared. Give it therefore to the Holy Spirit, who will undo it in you, because it does not belong in your mind, which is part of God. The Holy Spirit in later generations retains the power to, in, re, yeah, to interpret correctly what former generations have thought and thus release their thoughts from the ability to produce fear anywhere in the sonship. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to go too fast through this, so I go back to this a little bit. As you see it here like keeping mercy thousands, forgiving inequity, transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the inequity of children up to the fourth or third or fourth generation. Like that threat, that, as I hear it, is corrected. Like it's corrected by spirit. So it's not going to haunt you. It's not going to be there for you. In other words, you can actually not keep yourself in time with it. This is where this was about. It's like these biblical references have been used to in fact keep you in time. And now you read, give all this to the Holy Spirit. Like let us be uh, interpreted by the Holy Spirit. It is not it's like in releasing your ancestry or ideas about family. Like don't say perform your own miracles. No, it's like Give this to the Holy Spirit. Everything can be, say, interpreted in a whole new way. That is going to set you free. That's why this is given to you. It's like it's going to set you free, but you cannot do that yourself. You're, say, completely involved and part of it. So even physically, you could be seeing yourself as part of it. And to be free of it, to have it being, say, lifted of you, uh, it has to be given away to spirit in order for the healing to occur. Well, this is exactly what the point that I wanted to come to with you, because in fact it is um, the, the whole thing of time, ancestry, thinking that you're being determined by your past or by the past happenings that have occurred to you or were happening in your family, in your ancestry. Your idea can be that you're, say, literally locked in time by those experiences. And that's a very common thing. You can call it trauma, you can call it like nightmare scenarios where you went through, the death episodes that you experienced, uh, past life experiences that you're still taking with you in some way. Uh, all ideas that place you on a timeline of, um, say, uh, with a past that seems to be still alive in you as a memory, as a physical limitation or as a mental limitation of some sort. Like all that can be taken away from you by letting your past be reinterpreted, in fact, by spirit. And it can go back seven generations back and forth. It really doesn't matter. It's like there's no limit to that since there's no such thing as time. But, but in fact, what is being offered here then in this moment is you are free of your past, of your ancestry, of your family limited ideas of yourself that you carry with you if you let the relationships, the ancestry, your let's say stay in time and space be reinterpreted by spirit. Like then you actually shift slowly but certainly or maybe quick and suddenly to the point where you experience your wholeness 
which was not scheduled for another two million years in the evolutionary process as you knew yourself before. So this is this is like absolute quantum healing procedure here that is being performed, that is offered to you in this moment. That is so amazing. That is so amazing. And it it works, you'll see. Just you just have to apply that. And here you by listening to me you save yourself another five hundred years or maybe more. Like this is how that goes. It is it is really like the possibility of that has to be offered to you. You have to say allow yourself to be given new ideas that set you free by just knowing that that's a possibility. So it is possible by the possibility of it. Otherwise I could not even mention it. So that is really wild. It's really great. I love it. And I hope you love it too, because it's it's setting us free from from any ideas that you have. The interpretation that goes with that is in fact this is like don't be afraid to lose anything. It's like you're not going to lose anything. It is in your transformation just looking different. It's not as what you expected it to be. But it doesn't mean that you can be so you can totally be willing to to give it up, so to speak, not to perform that which you're so used to, allowing changes to occur. Say so seeing that there's nothing lost by you coming into an experience of recognizing yourself. Like there is there's nothing stopping you, preventing you from doing that. Um, so the only thing that you can do then is ask for help in situations like that, Spirit, I have no idea how to respond to this or how to do this. But um, the answer is going to be given in some form, and this is important, like in some form that you can understand and work with. It's like it, it tells you, Spirit tells you in ways that you can understand, that you can actually do without getting yourself into a deep episode of fear or anything like anything you can't take or something. Like no, your dedication to this transformational process say prevents you from from really huge uh, disturbances of that. It's like it keeps gentle pace with you in your undoing. So that's really important. Is not a child of God worth patience? I have shown you infinite patience, is what Jesus says, because my will is that of our Father, from whom I learned of infinite patience. His voice was in me as it is in you, speaking for patience toward the Sonship, in the name of its Creator. Only infinite patience can produce immediate effects. This is the way in which time is exchanged for eternity. So this is a quantum expression. Only infinite patience can produce immediate effects. This is the way in which time is exchanged for eternity. Infinite patience calls upon infinite love and by producing results now renders time unnecessary. I love that. Infinite patience calls upon infinite love and by producing results now renders time unnecessary. Now you now you got me. Now I got you and my team. I know that you are going to like this too. It's like suddenly you're part of the team. It's like infinite patience why would you be worried about if it's all going to happen in the right time and all this it's like no have infinite patience for the sonship like if i perform infinite patience the effect of that is immediate if i don't want it to change like within a certain time lim limit but have all the time in the universe for this to occur the effect will be immediate and what effect is that? It's like recognizing that there's no such thing as time because it just dissolved into your infinite love that you were extending by performing infinite patience. So this is like 
top forgiveness, quantum forgiveness, you could say, if I um, say, deal with my brother like this, walking extra mile, um, giving him much more time, always more time, always giving him, say, the space to undergo his own experience, being there, letting that occur the way it occurs, not forcing anything on it, leaving that for what it is. You see that that has an immediate effect on not only on the cellular system, not only on the DNA, not only on, but on the whole idea of time association, like the whole idea of thinking that there's something going on in time, in your experience of yourself. In fact, what it says here was that like it makes time unnecessary. Well, this is where we enter back into the first expressions that we shared uh, from Master Teacher. It's like you enter into your supra-consciousness, where all is one, it's like there's nothing else going on. It's your illumined mind, it is your whole mind that's capable, and that is, say, literally uh, all-inclusive of the universe that is you. So this is this is... If you, if you hear this, it's like it's a bit of work to really let this sink in. But see what, uh, and you can take all the time for it that you need. <laughs> I'm not pressing you. It's like take your time, but stay stay with this for just a second. Stay with this for for a moment, because what is actually offered is such an amazing, say, healing opportunity that time becomes obsolete, or like time becomes unnecessary, it completely dissolves into this moment, like into this action of your mind by being infinite patience. So, yeah. So that takes care of your ancestry if time dissolves into an infinite moment like that takes care of your confusion or conflicts in time. It takes care of your experienced limitations of yourself in your trauma, in your illness, in your depression, in your anxiety. It takes care of all of that. All right, so thank you so much. It's really wonderful that you um, allow yourself to be exposed to this, is what I say. It's like, thank you for doing that. It's really great. And um, I hope to see.